Good morning, uh, Mr. Steven. I hope you can hear me. 
Good morning, Mr. Steven. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Steven. I hope you can hear me. Good morning, Mr. Steven. Mr. Steven, are you, can you be able to hear me? Hello, good morning, Mr. Bomba. Mr. Steven is not around. Okay. Um I'm stepping in for him. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, I think uh, let let me start. Okay, uh, you please. Help, you you'll help me record and um and and live stream. Eh? Yes, I've already done that. Hey, uh, no, we normally start when the the slide share started. Okay, but no problem. Uh, Okay, good morning, dear learners. I hope you can be able to hear me uh, very well. We are going to continue from where we ended last time. Last time we looked at leaf modifications and flowers, but we did not complete the flowers. Uh, so I think uh, uh, not to waste time. Uh, let me go straight on to uh, the flowers. Uh, okay, so. Uh, these are some of the leaf modifications which we were able to see last time. Insectivorous, the brophyllum leaf, we were able to look at it. And then we started flowers where we looked at the, the hibiscus flower, which, which was this one. And uh, we said that a flower is a part of the shoot specialized for reproduction. And I hope you can be able to remember very well. And then... Um, from there, we looked at the maize flower, whereby uh, this upper part is normally the male flower. And then these are the small, small, uh, which look like hairs. That is the female flower. Okay. So that is the female flower uh, that we were able to look at. Then we also saw the grass flower, how it looks like. Uh, this is the grass flower. And if, if you can look at it uh, critically, you see that these are some of the flowers which are modified for uh, to be for wind pollination. The, the stigma is feathery. You can see the stigma are feathery. So we looked at all those things uh, last time. Then you should be able to, to name or label, uh, you should be able to label the different parts of a flower you should be able to label the different parts of the flower, which may include uh, the stigma, the style, the anthers, the filament, the petals. Remember I said petal can also, you can also call it corolla. And then the sepal, you can also call it calyx, the receptacle. And then these are epicalyx, these small, small ones after, just after the petals. So you should be able to name, to, to name that. If you are, if you have checked in Google Classroom, actually, I already gave you an assignment about that. And I hope you looked at it. Then parts of the flower, there are four major parts that make up a flower. Although there are some other parts, but the major ones are four. And uh, the first one is calyx, or you can call it the sepals. The second one is corolla. 
or you can call it the petals. The third one is the gynoecium. Now, gynoecium is the female part of the flower. If you don't want to call it a gynoecium, you can call it pistil. I think this is what you are uh, most comfortable with. Pistil, okay? Or in some books, they will call it carpel. Uh, they'll call it carpel, like that. Uh, if you want to remember this, uh, that Genoesium is the female part of the flower, remember, uh, Americans normally have a name, uh, which is Gina or Jaina. Uh, it's a, a name for the female. So you can always remember that Jaina is a female, so Genoesium is female. Then Androesium, there is a name called Andrew. Andrew is a name for the male, Andrew. So when you say androesium, just know that this is the male part of the flower. If you don't want to call it androesium, you can call it stamen. You can call it stamen. If you don't want to call it stamen, uh, which other word? I think that's it. Androesium or the stamen. That's the, the male part of the flower. Okay. And uh, you should be able to draw actually flower. And Would label it. Of course, uh, please, you should always first raise your hand and then uh, I choose you and then you can. Uh, yes, what do you want to say, Shadik? Master, I'm tapping the senior one link and it's bringing me here. Yeah, because the, the time is for biology in senior two. So this the senior one lesson is on Thursday for biology. Okay, thank you, Master. So always read your timetable as well. Don't confuse people. Hey. Okay, then um, we can now continue with uh, the the stamen that's the male part of the flower, has two parts. The filament, which connects it to the main flower body, and then the anther head. And then uh, the female part of the flower, call it the yakubu. You have a question? Yes, is this senior too? Uh, Yes, it is senior two. Senior one, we leave now. Yes, if you're in senior one, please just leave. With our, this time is for biology senior two. Then when are we coming in? Uh, don't you have a copy of the timetable? No. Please read the timetables very well. You will be able to always get the answer. The timetable has been in circulation for a, for two, for actually three months. Uh, so if you're in senior one, just leave. Senior two, this is for senior two. And then uh, the, the stigma, the stigma, sorry, the couple is made up of the stigma, which is the upper part that receives the pollen, the style, uh, which connects it to the ovary and then the ovary itself. Now inside the ovary, you find ovules. Uh, inside the ovary, you find there uh, ovules. And then, so those are the major two and their parts. Then the petals, you can call it corolla. Calyx, you can call it. Uh, uh, please keep on muting yourselves, otherwise I'm going to mute you for good. Okay. Uh, then we can go to the next. This is the, the transverse, sec, actually, longitudinal section through that we looked at the hibiscus flower. So you should be able to draw that and identify those pictures and what they are. Uh, and then types of pistil. So uh, our major topic for today, we are beginning from there, whereby we are looking at the types of pistils, looking at the types of pistils. Um, so there are three main types of pistils, whereby we have the monocarpus. Mono means one. Mono means one. 
Then in two, we have the sine capus. This is a pistil with capus fused together. So here, the most common one is when you look at the one for hibiscus. When you look at the one for the hibiscus, it is here. And then we have the apocarpus pistil. This is a pistil with several capus which are not fused. This is the one apocarpus. So you should be able to draw actually these ones, the monocarpus pistil, apocarpus pistil, and the sine carpus pistil, okay? And as well be able to label it very well, okay? So mono, it, it will just be one, like for example, in morning glory, uh, apocarpus, we shall see the one for brophylum and then the buttercup, I'll show you the pictures, and then the sine carpus, uh, the one in hibiscus, uh, if you have ever seen the hibiscus flower. And then uh, we can go on to, this is the buttercup. I don't know whether you've ever seen this kind of flower in your home or garden. Have you ever seen this flower? Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, 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 can you guys be able to hear me very well? I hope you are able to hear me very well. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I was still telling you that... Um, that's that's the buttercup flower. Yes, Mwesugwa Victor, you have a question. Mwesugwa Victor, sir, you are moving fast. Oh, okay. Let me slow down. Uh, yes, Hereza Denise says that slide back to the types of pistils. Okay, let me go back to the types of pistils. Uh. I think some people have said that I'm moving very fast. Uh, then someone is saying that the screen is not clear. Is it for everyone that you can't see my screen very well? No. Okay, let me go back. Uh, Pardon? I'm not understanding. Okay, I don't, I don't know that you. Let me go back. Now, this is what I want you to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you find a flower like this one, yeah. okay, you can isolate yes. a pistil. You can see that the pistil is just made up of one. This is the pistil or the female part of the flower. Now, this type of flower has what we call monocarpus pistil. This type of flower has what we call mono. Uh, this type of flower has what we call monocarpus pistil. Now, if you find a flower like this one, This one here. This type of flower has what we call sinecapus pistil. And if I can isolate it out, well, I'm going to isolate this type of pistil. So it will be like this. Like that, like that. This is sine kappa species where there are many up fused in one style, like in hibiscus here. Many up fused in one style. 
okay? This one is monocarpus. Now, apocarpus pistil, uh, if I can use this picture, will have many of these like this. Here. Like that. Now that is going to be uh, apocarpus species. I hope you have been able to understand. I can't hear you properly, teacher. When I'm not hearing you. Uh, have you guys been able to understand what I've just explained? The three types of pistil? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, that's very good. So uh, they will be found within the flower, but of course when the petals are there, you can't see them. But when you remove the petals, that's when you can be able to see them. So those are the three types of uh, pistils. And uh, you can see this one when they cut through. This is the one for the hibiscus. But up, of course, you are, you are seeing that. Now, these are the three. Uh, wait a bit. So these are the three types of pistils. The monocarpus, the apocarpus, and the synecarpus. Normally, this is what we see inside when we have removed uh, the petals. So if the petals were there, probably if I can draw the petal here, you wouldn't be able to see it. That is what you would see. And normally you could have the stigma up here like that. Hey, I'm assuming that was the stigma. Ah, this is how the flower would be like. Okay. Hey, I hope that is very clear now. Uh, let us continue with uh, the types of ovaries. I hope each one of you is at the same page with me. Uh -huh. Okay, now looking at the types of ovaries, uh, there are two types of ovaries. Uh, which include the following. We have the superior ovary and the inferior ovary. Okay. Superior, inferior. Now, superior means that the ovary is above all the other four floral holes. Okay. And inferior means it is below. What do we mean by below or up? Look at this picture here. Hmm? When you see that the petal, the sepal, uh, the stamen, they are all coming on the bottom, the swelling of this swelling called ovary, that is superior. When you see it is below down here, and the other whole four furrow holes are just up, that is inferior ovary. And you can see I got this picture here of a trans of a longitudinal section through a flower so that you are able to see what I'm talking about. Now, in this case, this would be superior ovary because you can see all these ones are coming from below it. So the ovary is above, that is superior ovary. Okay. Uh, I hope that is very clear. Uh, going forward, okay, so going forward, after looking at the types of ovaries, we can now go on to look at some of these flowers. Now, this flower is for the cassia plant here in picture A. That's the cassia flower. Let me first go back. Now, this flower is for the comelina. Comelina. Comelina flower.
Kumaina flower. And then this is from Mimosa Podica. Mimosa Podica flower. Okay. And then uh, looking at the terms used, uh, we also have terms that we use when we are learning about flowers. And uh, we shall begin with one term called the complete flower. So a flower is said to be complete if it has all the four floral holes. If it has all the four floral holes. Okay. That's when it is complete. That is the sepals, the petals, uh, the androesium or stamen, and the pistil or gynoesium. Those are the four floral holes of the flower, which you must understand as a must. And then uh, it is incomplete if it is lacking any of those four above. We shall consider it as an incomplete flower. Okay. And then it will be perfect if a flower has both the male and the female part of the flower. That is a perfect flower. Now, the flower that you are seeing here is uh, that one of the bean, the bijanjalo. This is the bean flower. And I hope you guys have ever seen them. It is a perfect flower because it has both the male and female. It is a complete flower because it has all the four floral holes from, this is the calyx. It's here. Yes, Barak Samuel, you have a question? Samuel? I want to ask you, you talk about the superior flower, isn't there inferior? Yes, I talked of the you superior talk over Okay. Uh, I talked of the superior over well. Okay, let me go back. Uh, uh, let me go back uh, on that slide. Now, this swelling that you are seeing here uh, is the ovary, okay? When you see the, this swelling and below it arises all the petals arise from down, the sepals arise from down the swelling, the stamina arises from down the swelling, that means that is superior because the ovary is above them, is seated on top of them from where they originate from, okay? And then uh, here uh, in this other picture, the swelling is down and all the others arise from to the top. So this is inferior, inferior ovary. If you want to look at them, just go and get a flower and cut through longitudinal like in this flower. You'll be able to see it here. It will be very visible. You get it? Now, I got this example of an inferior uh, ovary, whereby this swelling is the ovary here, but all the other petals arise from up and everything arises from up. Okay? Uh, and I think you can be able to see it here very well. Now, going forward, um, I've seen a question here. Uh, let me first look at this question a little bit. Owol Joshua is asking uh, that what's polypetalous? Now, we are here to talk about that as another term which we use in flowers. Of course, poly means many, and petalous has to do with petals. So I'm going to explain more about it uh, when we have reached that term. As the among the terms, I was still telling you that uh, um, what you are seeing here is the flower 
of a bean plant. It is this one, the flower of a bean plant. It has uh, this here. Uh, it has the the, sep the the calyx or the sepals. It has these uh, petals. Of course, there are three different types of petals. The standard one, the winged petals. This one and this one are winged petals. There are also some other. Uh, there's a kennel inside. A, if you are to examine it very well. And then uh, we can also think of the imperfect flower, the flower lacking either the male or the female. And the, common, the most common example is this one of the purple, the purple flower, the papali. Mm -hmm. You're going to find that it, it is either male or female. Okay. And then we also have unisexual flower. Uni means one. So if it is unisexual, that is one sexual part. So it has only one sexual part. That is either staminode, when the flower has stamen, only all pistillate. That is when it has uh, couples only. We also have bisexual. Bi means it too. Sexual, sexual parts, or hermaphrodite. Is one that contains both the male and the female organs or parts. Then we also have a term which is called monoecious. Mono means the one. So it's one that has the pistillate and staminate that are born on the same plant, but at different points. So just if you want to understand this term, uh, mono make it like one plant. If it were one plant, I'm assuming that's the plant, but it will have both the female and the male, but on different parts. But on the same plant, that is mono, same plant. And when you're looking at dioecious, now here, it should be one plant bearing either the stamen or the pistil, like in the case of the popo. The papali. So you're going to find the purple whether it a purple may only be female, and you may also find the male purple. Okay. Then uh, going forward again, we also have another term which is dichogamy. These are flower terms which you need to acquaint yourself with. With the dichogamy, uh, di means it too. But here in Kogame, we are looking at maturing at different times. So like two different times. Mwesugwa um, Victor is saying that I'm going so fast. I don't know. Uh, what do you guys mean by I'm going fast? Should I talk slowly or is it that some of you are copying? Is it that some of you are copying notes or because you are not under, um, moving forward that you are not understanding. It is because we are some of us, we are copying notes. Okay. Now, for some of you are copying notes, we told you that uh, the lesson is just one hour. Hmm? The lesson is just one hour. One hour we cannot, if, if we were to leave you to copy notes, we can only study two slides, which is not good. These notes which I am teaching right now, they are there in Google Classroom. I think uh, on the last, uh, on the last, uh, uh, the last five minutes, I'll, I'll open up the Google Classroom and I show you where the notes are. I say that whenever uh, you guys, I think for some of you guys who have just joined, you know that the lessons are just one hour and they are strictly for learning and not to copy notes, okay? Hey, and not to copy notes. These notes are already shared with you in your classroom. So the last five minutes, I'll make sure uh, I do that. Now, uh, going back to these terms, which I was talking of, the daikogame. With daikogame is a condition in which the male and female parts of a flower mature at different times. That's why I say like two times daikogame. 
whereby if it is the answers that mature first before the stigma that is protandre. And I want you to take note of this pro then andre from androesium, which means male, okay? And then jaine, protogyne. You can see this one, jaine, which means female. That should always give you a clue uh, that which one matures first, okay? So protandre, when the answer is mature before stigma. Protogyne, where the stigma matures before anthers. And I told you andresium means male. You can always remember from the name Andrew. Andrew is a male name. And then Jaina, Jainawesia means female part. You can always remember from Jaina, like uh, there's a name called Jaina for the females in America. Uh, some females are called Jaina, okay? Uh, much as here in Uganda, we normally don't use it so much, but you can also call yourself Jaina. Uh, if you want. Now, and, and here you can see that uh, with protogyne, it is the female or gynoesium that matures before the stamen. And protandry, it is the androesium which matures before the gynoesium. So they should never, never, ever confuse you. And then uh, we also have some other terms. Another term which is... Um, Wait. Another term which is a uh, regular flower. The regular flower. Um, the regular flower, a flower which can be divided symmetrically in different planes. Okay. And you can see here in figure 4.13. You could divide this in any plane. But then the irregular flower is one which can only be uh, divided into two similar halves. Like this one, the flower of the crotalaria. Uh, this is the flower of crotalaria, uh, which resembles the one for the bean plant. Crotalaria. This one is. Uh, um, a flower, and then we have those that are asymmetrical. Uh, this one is for a uh, malanga. Uh, in English, it is called, uh, okay. I hope, um, yeah, you are following. So, this one is for Kana Lily, a uh, Kana Lily. Uh, that is for Kana Lily. Okay, so I hope you've been able to understand, like there are some flowers which can be divided to get equal halves, like this one and this one, one and two. Then there are some flowers that for them you cannot divide to get equal halves, like the one of Kana Lily here. But then those that can be divided, there are those that you can divide once and you get equal halves, those are the zygomorphic or the regular, sorry, the, uh, those are the actinomorphic or the regular. And then there are those that you can divide in many planes and you get equal halves. Those are the, acti uh, the actinomorphic, the regular. This is the irregular zygomorphic. Uh, I hope I'm not confusing myself. So from there, then uh, coming here, we have poly sepalus with polysepalus is when the sepals are born free or are separate and are distinct from each other and this is where our friend talked of the polypetalus polypetalus you can see that the petals are free okay and they are separate and then um okay sherina you have a question Teacher, I've not understood the part of regular and irregular flower. Okay, let me go back. Okay. 
Okay, going back uh, to what I've just told you, uh, what do I mean? Uh, let me take an example of your body. I think uh, you may not understand it because you are not flowers. Now, let me use your body uh, as a human being. As a human being, you are there. You are there. I'm assuming that is you. You have one eye here, another one there, the nose and the mouth, and some hair. Now, I'm assuming you are this human being, and we want to divide you into two equal halves. Do we cut you from, let's say, let me use a, a blue pen here. Do we cut like this? All to get equal halves, all we cut from above like that to, to get equal halves. What do you suggest? Yes, Viking. Above. Very good, from above. So that means we don't look at this angle, okay? So that means there is only one way in which we can cut you as a human being from above, and that is from above and we get equal, equal halves. Now that is the zygomorphic or irregular flower that we can cut only once and we get equal halves. Now, what about uh, which, which uh, animal should I use? Starfish. If you studied about classification, where we have phylum echinodermata, under phylum echinodermata, we have the starfish under phylum echinodermata. Uh, we have the starfish. Okay, have I drawn it well? I doubt. Okay, I think I should have drawn it like this. Okay, I've not drawn it well, but the starfish you can cut in any plane and you get equal halves. You can cut in any plane, like in this kind of flower here. When you cut through from this angle, you get equal halves. From this angle, you get equal halves. From this angle, you get equal parts. So that is the one which I call uh, the regular, all actinomorphic, a flower which can be divided symmetrically in in different planes, equally in different planes, or in more than one plane. Okay, I hope that is now uh, clear. But then there are also some others which, whereby there is no single plane whereby you can cut them and you get equal halves. There are also such flowers, and the most common example which I've given you is that one of Kana lily. Uh, in Uganda, it's called Amalanga, the Kana lily plant. This one, I hope you have ever seen it. Sometimes it has yellow flowers, sometimes red or white. So it depends uh, on the species which you have at home. Okay. Uh, going forward, uh, we can continue and look at uh, the next slide. Okay, I was still telling you of uh, poly, which means many, sepalus. So polysepalus is when the sepals are born free, all are separate and are distinct from each other. So you just need to have separate sepals. You can see them. And then polysepalus, you have separate sepals. Polypetalus, you have separate petals. Okay, but then there are some others that can be fused, like for example, in the hibiscus flower, its uh, sepals are fused at the bottom and only free, slightly free above. That is gamosepalus. And uh, for example, another one is in the morning glory. In morning glory, you find that this is how the sepals are. They are fused at the bottom and only slightly free above. That's gamos, gamopetalus, okay? 
I hope that is very clear. Then there are some sepals which resemble petals that's called petaloid. And then, uh, yeah, for example, here, this is a, a picture of the bougainville flower. The bougain. Bougainville flower. And I hope you people, some of you could have be, be seeing it in your home. This is a bougainville flower. Uh, if you can have access to it, you can be able to actually see uh, the difference there, the bougainville flower. Then uh, going forward, uh, we can look at, we have just so far, we have looked at the flower terms. We saw the different types of pistils, which you must know. We have seen uh, what we mean by stamen or androesium. We have seen what we mean by gynoesium or uh, the pistil, or if you don't want to call it pistil, you can call it capel. Okay. Now, let us see how these flowers are pollinated such that they can become into fruits. Because once a flower has been pollinated, it can turn into a fruit. Now, pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the answers to the stigma of a flower in simple terms. Okay. Uh, Jovia Pavin is saying that, uh, teacher, is it the same as Bohemia? Bohemia, I've shown you, I don't know what you mean, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Bohemia is different. I want you to be very much critical uh, when you're looking at it. Maybe it could be having, by the way, in, in, in biology, certain names, um, Isabella says that people may want to contribute. Yes, Isabella, can you say something, please, about uh, what do you think? Uh, yes, Isabella. Teacher, I wanted to contribute about like the agents of coordination, what the characteristics of the different types of coordination. Hey, okay. So, so far, do you understand the difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I think these are still fresh from your mind. It's one of the topics which are taught in science, I think. And here, uh, it, it should be you guys to over-contribute about this. I will not uh, so much comment about them. Probably, uh, you could do it. Uh, Baba, sorry. So uh, I think let us first brainstorm about the different agents of pollination that you know. We shall not go into those definitions. Yes, Isabella. Animals. Okay. Thank you, Isabella. Plant. Uh huh. Plant C. Someone has said the plant C. I don't know what you think about his her answer. Yes, Tina. Insects. Uh huh. Insects. EGBs. EGBs, okay, bees and juchi. Yes, pintu, opini. Uh, pintu, what do you have to say? Wind. Wind. Uh -huh. uh, yes, Brenda Tendo. Uh, in the chat box, uh, Owol Joshua says that rain, Miss Ghana says that an ant, a bird, okay. Uh, so all those are very good answers. 
um, that you can always give mm, uh, about these different agents of pollination. Okay. And uh, if I may ask, why do you think that uh, agents of pollination go to flowers? Why do you think agents of pollination go to flowers? Uh, let me get some people here uh, that have raised hands. I'm seeing uh, Tina. Tina, what do you think so? Hey, Tina. Uh, Tina, can you tell us? I, I think some agents of flowers go there to get to pick to collect nectar as their food, e.g., birds and bees. Okay, thank you very much. They go there to connect uh, to collect nectar. Uh, what about the rest? What do you think? And pollinate. Okay, what about Sherina? Sherina, what do you think? To collect pollen grains. Uh, do you think there is a bird or a, a, a bee that may want to go and collect pollen grains? Do, do they eat pollen grains? Yes, to or suck, or right. To suck pollen grains. Okay, we're going to comment about Shina's answer. What about you, Torrid? Uh, what about Cravens? Cravens, what do you say? Tronival. Cravens? I think they are attracted by the bright colors of the petals. Okay, the bright colors uh, attract them. But there's this answer which Sherina has given us that uh, they go there to collect pollen, to suck pollen grains, actually. That's what she said. Do you think uh, insects may, may, may go when the intention is to suck pollen grain? By the I way, is pollen know. grain fluid? No. Okay, so... And the other one comes as a an additional as a sub something just yes, uh, added. Okay, um, yeah, and then you must know the characteristics of flowers which are uh, pollinated by wind, and characteristics which are pollinated by. Uh, old Joshua says that the scent can also attract them. I think that is true. Uh, you can be there, you can imagine, and you begin smelling some nice food. Uh, so you can be attracted by, uh, by the scent as well, okay? Uh, now, uh, I'm seeing time is almost done. As I promised, uh, we are going to end here, but let me show you how you guys can go to Google Classroom and then have access to, to the notes, as I said. Now, when you go in your browser, when you go in your browser, uh, this is it. You'll come here to these many dots, okay? And then click on it. And then you come to the classroom. If you are using a phone, you must first download that application, okay? You must first download that application. Uh, in the chat box, I'm seeing Torette had written that to me, I think they mainly go to search the seeds of the flower as their food. Uh, and then uh, Isabel says the large conspicuous petals which act as learning sites. Now I'll comment about it because of time. I wanted to show people who always come here and they want to copy notes. Now we're in here. Yes, Hannah. Yes, please go on. Teacher, how do you download it? Download it on your on the phone. You just go to Google Play Store. Uh, under Google Play Store, uh, you type the word the Google Classroom. It will come. Classroom. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. So here, when you check S2E class, you click in it. 
Uh, after clicking in it, you come and click on classwork. After clicking on classwork, because for me, I teach biology, you move down up to this section. Now in this section, this is where I put the notes, leave modification and flower notes, click in it. When you click in it, it will bring you this. Even if I just click on it like this, see, the notes are there and you can be able uh, to access them very, very well. All these notes are there. So you don't need to keep on copying notes. These are the notes which I've been teaching and I already shared them there. And even the, lesson, the notes for next lesson are there already. Are you seeing that? So please, next time, don't copy. And for you, I'm just going to download the application from, from Google Class, uh, from the App Store. Uh, what you will do after downloading the uh, that app, you'll come to your Google browser, and then you type the word Uganda Christian Schools Association, that word. Once that word comes, mm -hmm. You see the website here, click in it. Uh, after clicking in it, it will bring you here. So there's this point where you have join e class and you click in it. You'll be able to take you there all. You may first move down. Okay, wait. Uh, yeah, join e class here. So you click here in join e class. After clicking in join e class, then it will actually the timetable is, is already there. And then these are the different links which we you normally join for the different classes. And then as you move down, those are links for the WhatsApp groups. As you move down, you'll come here senior to Google Classroom and the code is there. Click in that automatically. Uh, you'd have joined the Google Classroom class where you can have access to all the notes and everything. Okay, um, so otherwise, I'm seeing it is time up. Uh, you're welcome. I think we can end here. Bye bye and enjoy yourselves. Bye. 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 Bye, thank you for the... Bye, 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 bye.